welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a Q&A video. This is my first Q&A video for my channel, so uh, I've just kind of gathered up a bunch of questions from lots of different places, some from emails, some from Tumblr comments, some from Tumblr messages, some from Instagram comments, some from comments here. Um, yeah, a whole smattering of different sources, and some of them are the same question over and over again, so I kind of combined them and shortened them. So I won't be mentioning any of the people who asked the questions in this video, uh, but I will try to do that at some point in the future. But just because I was gathering so many different ones and there were so many repeats, I decided to just kind of distill it down to the question itself. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to read the questions from my computer, which is right next to me here, and then I will talk about them. So the first question uh, is, is it important to focus on only one topic in building an illustration portfolio? Um, I know why people have asked this because I think that that's something that you see a lot online. It's a, a common sort of pearl of wisdom for uh, new illustrators to focus mainly on one topic and to have a really focused portfolio. So it focused so many times. Um, to have a very narrow portfolio because that makes it easier for art directors to find you. Um, and I do think that it's important to some extent. Obviously, I have focused a lot on food in, in my own portfolio, but um, I think that it's much more important to have a consistent style. So, you know, if you look at my website and some of the different stuff that I've done, you can see the way that I do uh, rocks or minerals um, is very similar to the way that I w would do a bird, which is also very similar to the way that I would do a piece of cake. Um, so I, I have kind of the same approach that I use for most things that I end up doing. Um, of course, I'll sometimes tweak that if the client requests it, but generally I have the same style, the same approach regardless of subject, and I think that that's more important than having just one thing that you focus on. Um, and then also, the other thing that I think is way more important probably than either of those is just like making a lot of stuff. So the more you produce, the better your work will be, um, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, having a large body of work, also just in terms of like how search engine optimization works, if you're posting those uh, and if you're putting them on a website and you're appropriately tagging them so that there's um, text content that the uh, Google bots can find, it is uh, really important to have just a large collection of things. Um, that makes it easier for you to be found too. So um, in summary, I think it can be good, but more important than focusing on one thing is having a consistent style and producing a lot. Uh, the next question is, how did you develop your style of making art and how did you know it was what you wanted to stick with? Um, I think it's hard for me to talk about this objectively because I don't, I don't really know how it happened. It just sort of, I think it's kind of like I was, when I was thinking about this earlier today, thinking about what I would want to say to this question, the closest analogy that came to mind for me is handwriting. And I think you can make a conscious choice at some point to write an A, you know, this way or an A that way. I'll put that on the screen since it probably wasn't very clear, but um, you might make that choice, but uh, over years and years of handwriting, regardless of however you decided to do your A, it will still take on the, the feel of your particular handwriting because there's so many other factors. There's like how firm you press with the pencil, um, how wide your strokes are, how big your letters are. There's so many different things besides just deciding to do it that one way. So, um, I mean, I can look back and say, overall, I've generally, since childhood, I've generally liked trying to draw things with some element of, of realism. I've always been interested in that. Um, and then probably in college, I started focusing more on, if you look really close at my stuff, even though it's detailed, there is usually a lot of texture in it. And I just, I like texture. I have very naturally, I have a very textural hand. Um, and then 
I don't know, some of the other things that influenced it were probably different media that I was working with, the, um, the things, the subjects that I was interested in exploring. So I, I think it was just years and years of trial and error and trying different things and incorporating um, different media or different techniques. And um, I think it wasn't really something that, um, yeah, I can't say this was the style that I had always intended because I wasn't planning on ending up here. I just, I think if I were, if I were to show some of the, the styles of artwork and the artists that I'm really inspired by, some of them would probably make a lot of sense. Like, I love um, Wayne Thibault, which, which of course, like, he does a lot of food. So um, that was one reason why he was really inspiring for me. But then I also, um, I also like a lot of illustrators painters, people that kind of cross that illustration painting divide, so like Eric Jones or Zoe Milk, and their styles are so different from mine, um, but I find them very inspiring. And I don't think I could say, oh, I really want to paint like Zoe Milk, so I'm going to like, I'm going to do that. I, I don't think that's any more possible than saying, I want to copy this person's exact handwriting, and that's going to be the way that I do handwriting from now on. I just don't think that it works that way. So, um, yeah, I hope that was a clear enough answer. I feel like I'm seriously babbling here, guys. So hopefully this doesn't turn into a super long video. Um, yeah. So the next question is, do I recommend going to art school? Um, and this is also a little bit tricky to answer because I, um, if you follow me on Tumblr or if you've seen other interviews that I've done, you know that I do have a bachelor's in fine arts with a concentration in painting, but I didn't go to an art school. I went to a small liberal arts college and I actually wasn't planning on studying fine art. I went in planning on studying, I think, literature and then I switched to history and then to sociology and I tried uh, several different things and I think I probably even had a phase where I was thinking I would maybe do something in the sciences but um, Yeah, I didn't go in planning to be uh, an art major So I only ended up choosing that when I took a, a drawing class as an elective um, The first semester or actually maybe it was the second semester It wasn't until my sophomore year that I actually took a drawing class and I had never taken um, any sort of art lessons or classes in, in high school before that. Um, so yeah, within the course of that class, I, I just, something clicked and I knew that that was what I wanted to be spending all of my time on. Um, so I changed majors and then I had to put together a whole portfolio, of course, to get into the art program. Um, but I can't really speak to the decision where you're 18 years old and deciding, do I apply to RISD or CalArts or whatever? Um, I actually might interview my sister about that because she had a much more traditional track in terms of just applying to art schools and putting together the, the art school portfolio and stuff. And some of you guys have asked about that too. So um, if you're interested in that, I could interview her and get some of her feedback there. But um, I think some of what's behind this question too is just, is it valuable? Is the stuff that you learn in art school valuable? And I think for me, absolutely. Um, and the, the biggest thing that I learned aside from, yes, I learned technique. Yes, um, I learned some very specific, practical, easily applicable, well, I don't know how easy, but I learned some specific things. But I think overall, the most important thing that I took away from uh, the experience of, of having a, an art education was how hard it is. So I think um, prior to that, I've, I've always enjoyed drawing. Um, but I, um, I can't remember if I've talked about this on my channel. I, I've definitely talked about it in other interviews and um, probably written about it some on Tumblr. But uh, I was constantly growing up, like in high school when I would, um, and, and even younger, I always wanted things to look a certain way and I'd have an image in my head of how, uh, of how I wanted the finished piece to look. And, you know, I would spend, you know, 40 minutes or an hour or sometimes a little bit longer trying to make something, but then I would get so frustrated that it didn't look the way that I wanted it to. And I had always heard about art and thought about art as something that was um, innate. It was a talent and you either could do it or you, you couldn't, kind of like 
singing, I guess, um, or, you know, being an Olympic swimmer or something, you, I thought you had to have a certain amount of raw material. Um, and because it was so hard for me, I felt like, well, I just must not be uh, very good at it, or this isn't a, I don't have this talent uh, in the way that I would need to, to produce what I want, the thing that I see in my head. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, so I would always end up kind of scrapping things part way through and I, I didn't really have a lot of dedication. Um, but when within the fir that first class, that first drawing class, um, the teacher did this thing where she would write down like how many hours we should expect to spend on the project and it was like eight hours, 12 hours, sometimes, I mean, not in drawing one, but as I got further on, it would be you know, 20 or more hours on, on certain projects. And that, um, well, first that terrified me, but then I, very quickly I started to see, wow, if I'm spending this much time on a piece, of course that one piece is gonna be so much more developed, but even beyond that, I was practicing more and more, and uh, just like writing or doing math, any sort of study, the more you practice, the better you get. So uh, that was the biggest takeaway for me, was just it takes a lot of time and a lot of work, and that is so much more important than whatever this idea of talent that we have. Um, so I, I think if I hadn't done that, I don't know if that would have, if I hadn't, had uh, some art education. I don't know if that would have clicked for me, um, just the idea of how much you have to work on it. So that would be my biggest recommendation there. Um, yeah, so uh, the next question <laughs> is, uh, do you use Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator? Uh, and I think this person means like in editing work. And I do not use Photoshop or Illustrator. I think I've mentioned in my um, my scanning and processing video, which I will link to somewhere on the screen here, that I did um, most of my, I do most of my processing on a program, either Pixelmator or um, one that's called Affinity Designer. And Pixelmator is kind of like a Photoshop dupe, um, and then Affinity Designer is more like an Illustrator dupe. Um, and they're both great programs, they're both very affordable, and uh, I just have never really, because I didn't um, have a design component to my uh, art education, I had to take a couple of design classes, but I wasn't a design major, um, so we never really had to do that much in, in Photoshop or any of the Adobe programs, so I didn't get so embedded in that ecosystem, so I've always just kind of like the idea of, especially now that it's Creative Cloud and you have to pay uh, with a subscription basis, I prefer just being able to buy the program and have the program. Um, so yeah, that's what I use and I will mention those down in the comment box. The description box, yes. <laughs> um, okay, and then the next question, do you use any tablet to paint or do you use a mouse for digital painting? Um, I've also mentioned this here before. I'm very new to digital painting. I, I've obviously have used, I've had to process my images for clients digitally for, for years because they pretty much always require that the background is taken out um, uh, for the kind of illustration that I do. So that is done digitally, but just purely creating a piece from start to finish uh, digitally, I've only been doing since this past December when I got the iPad Pro for Christmas. So um, that is what I'm using. I don't, um, I did have a little, um, I think in Wacom, I think it was the Intuos tablet that I would use for editing, but I never created anything on it. So um, I've only really created a piece from start to finish on the iPad with the, um, with the Apple Pencil. Uh, yeah, uh, how do you decide on what materials you want to use? This is also a tricky question. <laughs> I feel like these are all kind of complicated. Um, basically, I some, well, sometimes it's because I am experimenting and somebody has given me or I picked up an art store uh, some kind of new media and I want to try it out. Um, and of course, I, I can try it out on a plain piece of paper, but I feel like I usually don't really understand the capabilities and limitations of a given media until I have seen it in action. So sometimes that's why I just want to, I just want to try it and see how, how it works. And sometimes it works great. Sometimes it's really challenging, but, um, and then once I am very familiar with the properties of a given media, I tend to choose it based on the effect that I want 
to achieve in the end result. So um, a small example would be like, how do I decide between using the the softcore pencils and the the Prismacolor softcore pencils and the Prismacolor Verithin pencils? And um, the Prismacolor softcore pencils are are much softer, as their name suggests, and they have a, a bigger lead and have kind of more of a, a creamy lay down, whereas the Verithins are really hard, thin leads that are lighter, but you can get a really nice sharp edge with them, um, and they don't really have any of the problems that the Prismacolors can with wax bleed. Um, so I would choose the Verithins if I wanted to do something that had really fine detail. I usually end up using those in botanical drawings um, or sometimes with animals, like if there are little feathers or whiskers or something that's just very uh, delicate um, that I don't want to be too heavy handed with, I would choose the Verithins. And then um, like gouache or watercolor would be another choice or even like gouache or colored pencils. Um, and so I know that gouache is really opaque and I can achieve a, a solid color more with gouache than I can with watercolor and gouache is also um, totally matte, it has like a really velvety matte feel so I often will pick gouache if I'm doing something that is uh, that, that's man-made, something that has a lot of sharp edges because if I use gouache in something like um, well, it's something like a pastry, which I guess is man-made, but it's not It's not machine-made, it's handmade. So it has a lot of irregularities and little uh, details and nuances that work really well with a more textured application, like uh, pencils um, or even watercolor. But uh, gouache tends to work really well, for me at least, with, um, with painting things that were machine-made or were much more exact. Um, yeah, so basically I just, either I'm experimenting and trying different things or I think about the properties of the media and uh, how it interacts with other media and how I want it to look in the end. So there usually is some amount of strategy to it. Um, and sometimes I'll get partway into a piece and I realize, wow, this thing that I'm using isn't really working for, for this. I may need to bring in another, uh, another media to... Um, to take it in the direction that I want it to go. And that's actually kind of what happened with that um, that tulip piece that I posted last week. Um, I think I mentioned in the voiceover that I was originally planning on doing it in 100% watercolor because some people had requested a, a tutorial for 100% watercolor, but I got to the end and I just felt like, uh, I was having some challenges with the darker areas and some of the really fine details and I know I could have done it with watercolor but it would it was just so much easier to grab a couple of markers and uh, and some pencils to uh, to take over from there because I knew that I could get the result that I wanted um, with those media mediums media <clears throat> okay I hope that makes sense um, Next question, do you have any tips on Instagram for artists, specifically on getting your account seen? Um, basically, I would just say, I mean, I'm not an expert in, in social media at all. I, I just kind of try to use it regularly. Um, so I think that would be probably the most important thing on Instagram is posting regularly. And that, that's with any social media, um, whether it's, you know, Tumblr or Twitter or whatever you want to be putting something up. It doesn't necessarily have to be every day, although for Instagram it's definitely good if it is every day. Um, but it should be, there should be some sort of regularity so that you're not posting, you know, every three months. Um, and you will see, especially with art, you see the accounts of, of artists who, you know, have posted 10 things and then they have 50,000 followers. Um, but that's by far the exception rather than the norm. And I think for most of us, the best thing to do is just to post your best work as often as you can. And um, you, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I do sometimes use hashtags, but I don't do it on every post. Um, and I think it's best to have like a strategic use of hashtags. Of course, it's fun to make up really unique hashtags and use them as kind of commentary. I feel like a ton of people do that and I've done that at different times. But if you're wanting to get your uh, account, if you're wanting to get your stuff on Instagram seen, it's best if you kind of do a little bit of research to see what are the, what's the major hashtag for illustration or what are the major hashtags for illustration. 
uh, or if you want to do like pet portraiture or something that has its own hashtag so just look around and see what are the big accounts um, and what are the major hashtags and try to post your best stuff very frequently with those hashtags whenever possible that's my that's my two cents um, and then the last question here is how did you get your first freelance job? The true like first freelance job from a, a stranger, somebody who didn't know me that was for a big company. Um, that came because I had been selling stuff on Etsy for a couple of months and this is after Tumblr. So I was on Tumblr and then I started on Etsy. Um, and I just got an email or excuse me, a message on Etsy. They have like the little embedded messenger. So I got a message uh, out of the blue from an art director saying that they really liked my work and would I be interested in hearing about uh, a project that they were starting on. So I said, sure. And then she emailed me the details and they had some examples of different pieces that I had done that they really liked and that they wanted me to kind of emulate that particular look in, uh, in the piece for their project. Um, yeah, and I did it and they really liked it um, and I've worked with them again, um, so that was great. Yeah, that was my first real, real freelance job, I guess. Um, yeah, so I hope, I hope that was helpful. I have no idea how long this is. I haven't stopped to look at the camera. It's probably like 30 minutes long, but um, yes, yeah, so hope you guys liked it. Let me know if you, um, if you want me to do more Q&A videos, uh, I could potentially have to see if I'm brave enough to do a live one at some point. But yeah, if you're interested in that, of course, keep sending your questions and you can always tweet me your questions. I'm at Kendall Hilligus. Um, and yes, that should be it. And I'm so sorry this video is insanely long. I will really try to keep it shorter for the next Q&A. Yeah, I will stop myself here. All right, bye guys. I'll see you in the next one.